Hello, welcome to the second part of our look at the Teenage Engineering OPZ. In the first part, we looked at kind of general overview and tracks, and this time we've hooked it up and connected it to a bunch of stuff. And we're going to look at the editor and that connectivity. So what's going on here then, Gaz? OK, well, as we mentioned earlier, that the iPad, the way it connects as, it, well, not the iPad, the iOS device, so in this case, using an iPad, but it could be, it could be an iPhone as well. Once you're in there then, then you can use the screen button and when you press the screen button, and there, I, I, uh, either of any of the wheels here, you can pan through the different windows. MIDI setup, uh, devices where they set up the Bluetooth, motion and photomatic, we'll look at that in a moment, configurator and the OPZ itself. So if we go into there first, what we'll see now is essentially an overview of all the parameters pertaining to the particular selected track. So we've got track two selected at the moment, which is the snare track, um, but I could go, you know, kick. Right. And you can see as we go through them. And as we go through the other tracks, you can see there's a few of the graphics and stuff. We'll look at them briefly. Yeah. So in this instance, what we've mm. also done mm. is we've hooked up, we've got a little uh, USB-C to USB micro oh, adapter, and we've adapter. plugged that yep. into this key step, mm -hmm. which is, at, and it's powering from the battery. Yeah. We should also mention this has got a little uh, re replaceable, uh, I guess it's lithium ion battery, mm. and it's got enough grunt to, to power this, yeah. which is kind of cool. So, cool yeah. so that means we can actually play. Yeah. And a little, a little kind of side benefit of that is, it's actually making the key step Bluetooth a wireless Bluetooth controller. Because the MIDI's going out yeah. of that also into, mm -hmm. into the iPad. Mm. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated because yes. we thought, great, we could just plug in, we were going to use the circuit, weren't we? We were just yeah. going to use the circuit and plug that in yeah. as a USB host bow but it didn't recognize couldn't it. Rec and, we, yeah. and we couldn't get it to recognize quite a lot of things. That's so right. it was a little bit, I mean, it works well with the OPZ, it goes, uh, the OP1, OP1 yeah. goes straight in. Yeah, but works beautifully circuit, with the OP1. We thought, yeah, that would be a nice, but it doesn't, get so it's work. a bit. Some things work, some things don't work. Yeah. I but don't, the Bluetooth MIDI does. The Bluetooth MIDI does. And then the yes. answer to that would be, you know, you might want to use that for the screen, and then you plug uh, maybe a, a MIDI DIN interface yeah. into your mm. iPad, iOS world, mm. and then get into our outside world that way. Yeah, and I will show that. We've got little a little project set up uh, right. where, where that could demonstrate that. But just to finish off a little quick little tour around the app then. So as I mentioned, you can go through these and it helps you learn. What's kind of useful as well is like any of the buttons at the back, as I mentioned, there's four buttons at the back here. The P button is like project or pattern. So if I was to load in a project, for instance here, we can see the song consists of pattern one. Pattern that's one. twice round pattern one, yeah, twice yeah. round pattern two. Yeah. Okay. So you can sort of kind of so see So that's it. how it changed them up together. Exactly. Right? You know, I press the mixer <laughs> button, get a little overview of the mixer, and you know, I press the metronome, etc. So yeah. so you're getting a lot of visual, a lot of visual clues and stuff as well. One more thing as well there, you press a track button, it takes you to a specific page yeah. out here where you can set whether it's a poly or monosynth or, you know, and individual quantize. Right. on a per track and you can set the degree of quantize as well. Speaking of quantize, one thing I didn't mention earlier is like whatever track I had selected, you know, um, let's say I've got my bass track selected, or for instance, I go to a step. If I hold that step, this was played in in real time and it was slightly early. There's a little purpley LED flashing oh, right. and so that is indicating it, this it. slightly before, yeah. And then the plus and minus 24 ticks so either you side. Get, you get a bit of extra kind of Yes, shift. it's not snapped on the grid, you've got that, but you know, it's Slight like bit of 48 PPQ, I guess, you know, yeah. 24 either side. Um, so yes, so that's the kind of gist, that, you know, so the app will help you learn it, but you don't need the app to work with it. So can you back up all your projects and all your all your data via the app as well? No, you can't. And this is really frustrating. Uh, so like, let's have a look here. So one of the things in the configurator, for instance, we can come here where this is like, uh, this again will follow our track selection. Kicks, for instance, we can see that four of the potential 10 slots have got samples in there. There is another sort of six slots which are empty. Now you can't do nothing from this app, touch there. Right. What you'd have to do is in your computer, USB into your computer, find track one kicks, and then just drag, drag your. So this your, shows up like a USB drive, and you've yeah, got the there's a little in button right. where you, you boot it into a special way, like um, the OP one. Yeah, yeah, similar, of, yeah, same sort of thing. Frustrating. It's an iOS limitation, but you know, you and and, and the same comes. Yeah, rah, another, this, this, another iOS, another limitation. iOS limitation. Hopefully, this will change in the future. Fingers crossed. But right now, you have to if you want to. But like, you can, bring but you can thing. back stuff up. But just go you to can. Computer. There is a method for doing it. If you are stuck with an iOS, which is using something like a Kingston Mobile Lite, uh, USB in to the device there, and then it creates a wireless connection. Yeah. You've got to use an app on there, yeah, blah, 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 oh, blah. Don't, don't. but it is doable, it is doable. should you right. win. Okay. However, 
a little bit frustrating. And the same thing applies for your projects. If you want to back up your projects, there's no way of doing it through this nifty app, which seems kind of crazy. You have to do it okay. through a computer. So we also, um, and presumably we got the ability to then, this because th this Bluetooth MIDI is then going out to the uh, iPad. So we could maybe, re uh, we've got, have we got a, a project in here somewhere? Yeah, we, we have. Would... I, just before we do that, the one last thing I want to do about in the app though is, the photomatic thing. I'm just oh, going to show yes. this briefly, just just before we move on from this. So, like, this is like a kind of quite a fun thing, really. And so, I'm coming to photomatic, and now what photomatic is is like uh, now these um, as I oh, as so I was sequencing photos. I, I can sequence photos, and not only can I sort of so I can load up. Yeah, you know, I've got a bunch of photos, and I've got a bunch of uh, okay. You know, and as I'm, you know, you can see that each there's a different photo on each. Uh, on each key, right. On each key. But also the parameter knobs kind of work as well. So this is where it maybe first started out. Because I mean this, mm. at the moment, what we've got is this going into a USB-C and then HDMI out to the back monitor. We've, we've mm. set it up so that it's showing the iPad screen. That's a long story, but you can get <laughs> full size. So yes. you could use this in a projector yeah. or in something else that would be synced in time mm -hmm. with whatever you're doing. And that's quite, that's actually might appeal to some people just yeah, on its own. Yeah, that's right. And like, you know, say for instance, I was going to play like a bass line. If I if I held the track button, bass and photomatic, so now each time, <laughs> right? Okay, so you're sequencing the pictures and the notes. Yes, except on playback, it won't follow. Ah, it'll only do it in play. That's I don't know why that is. It must okay. be uh, maybe a firmware update will Probably do it. Probably not a deal breaker. But I mean, mm. the point is, is you can, <laughs> and, you, and you're adjusting stuff like kind of color balance, color balance and brightness, and and, and the like. So that's yeah. an interesting idea, interesting yep. concept. And then and then so that's like the photomatic mode. So let's come back out of here, and I'm going to go to the last mode on here that we haven't seen, and that is the motion mode. And this is really fun. So this is essentially a Unity game engine controller. I say game engine, so Unity 3D. 3D. So you uh, and there is an app I think you can download. So you can build your own 3D graphic. So here, for instance, you know, um, as the track would play, you can see the animation will trigger, and I can try different. You know, I've got different like visual effects I can try on it. Also, I can switch out, and there's ways of manipulating it. This is the one that now. Can we stop that a sec? Because the one thing that you might think, oh great, I could just put a USB-C uh, connector hub there with a with an HDMI out. Nah, no it doesn't work that way. It no. has to go via the, it's the iOS app only. Yes. At the moment. And that's, that does limit it. I mean, for those of you who might be uh, are thinking, you dodgy hipsters, it's that sort of, it sort of does reinforce that concept a little bit. But yeah. I mean, bear in mind, it's not really designed for people like you and I, but in terms of maybe what you might want to do for creating live graphics, I oh, think yeah. actually it could be very powerful. Yeah, right? yeah. And right. what's it? It's about 500 quid, this thing, isn't it? So yeah. as well as all the other things it yeah. does, it also does this. And remember, we mentioned earlier that one of the tracks is also a DMX lighting controller. So not only could you have your, your back projection happening, you could have your all stage lights all synchronized. But you'd need to hang a USB to DMX controller off your iOS device. <laughs> yeah. So it starts, yeah, but yes, yeah. pretty cool. But it's cool. Okay, so yeah, we've looked at the app now. We've looked pretty much all, all through the app. Um, so I think, yes, so now what we'll do is we'll come from the app and we'll open up a, a we'll open up AUM. Right. Now we've looked in a recent video at this AUM. It's essentially like a configurable mixing desk specifically for the iOS platform. So, um, so we made this a very quick pad just to sort of, this is the internal sounds only. Yeah. But as we said earlier, mm -hmm. these also represent MIDI tracks that can be sent to the outside world, certainly over Bluetooth. Yeah. They? So here in, in this, uh, we've got like three tracks set up. So if we just like pop these tracks back in, I mentioned before, but was, it's worth mentioning again, that all 16 tracks when addressing a, an external device, like for instance, in this AUM, I could, you could um, have sixteen or more track or more things, yeah, yeah, layer things up or whatever. Yeah, exactly. We're limited slightly because we haven't got a, then another USB to MIDI device that we could then, you know, plug in a load of hardware stuff. Which is funny. We've got the uh, uh, the Matrix <laughs> brew here, which is probably we reckon it's about a hundred times more or more bigger than the actual APZ. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah. it could be done, but not. Mm -hmm. you, you just need there's a bit of configuring. So, but but here it's yeah. pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, yeah. So like in the case of like you know, I'll just go with this track here. We've got it like coming in as OPZ. Bluetooth, and then I've got this feed-in channel eight. Um, now, uh, so if I was to play the track now, take the OPZ out. 
So we've just routed those three, the, the base and the cords yeah, and the lead, and the lead line. line the lead line, yeah. But we, if, can we mute some of the tracks in here and have the drums coming from the Absolutely. Open? Absolutely. So, mixer, shift on mixer, it goes red. So I'll take out the, the melodic parts. Right, okay. So, so, I mean, we were getting quite excited by the thought of this perhaps being, because we've got, bear in mind, all those master track things, all of the sort of the trick conditions, that type of stuff. We could get some very complex uh, MIDI sequences going that, you know, and perhaps you could run, run the show off the APZ, but it feels to me like we're a little way off having anybody having the cojones to do that. I know <laughs> Cuckoo did. Yeah, Cuckoo did. But yeah. he was using it more as the, the, the primary sound source, mm -hmm. wasn't he? Which is yeah. a different... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean... It's still relatively early days in the USB-C land. I mean, I, I just didn't have a USB-C to micro. I'm sure there'll be dozens yeah. of those around soon. Um, but, and, and, and as we yeah. say, we tried various class compliant devices. True. And they just didn't work directly from the... No. From, but, but the key step mm -hmm. does, no yeah. problem. And, you it know. might be something to do with power drain that, it, you know, yeah, the, the device has to only pull an ever so small amount of... Yeah, there's we things we just don't know. Yeah. However, in this particular case, though, the key step is working. Is now talking via Bluetooth MIDI yep. to the iOS device. Yeah. So yeah, I suppose that's an it's an added bonus, isn't it? It's not you wouldn't buy this just so you could get Bluetooth MIDI because there's other ways. There are, but I mean, it, it is still pretty cool. And I mean, this is the sound of the iPad. But you know, knock these out and turn this back up, and then you know. You know, I could choose like say MIDI channel one, and then you're you're talking directly to this over the wire. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So you know, but and I have to say, this is one of the strengths of the OPZ. If you're just sitting there and you and you're holding it, the way that the buttons are, and you're putting in step components and some of the you know and punching right. effect, it, punching quite... effect. It's like very ergonomic in that respect. It's actually very easy and nice. Right. And I can't really think of a better way of doing that. It's sort of one of those things that if you really dig the idea of learning how to use something like this and can think of ways to work it, then it's probably something you're going to be interested in. I mean, if you're looking for something that does things in a more traditional way, then you're probably <laughs> going to want to give it more of a wide berth, right? Yeah, I mean... Teenage engineering seems to sort of, you know, revel in making quirky devices that are actually a lot deeper than yeah. they But may require appear. effort. They require effort. They, and, you know, this isn't a cheap device. You are really going to, you know, if you're going to invest this kind of the money into this, you know, £529 or thereabouts, you know, so it's quite a lot so of money. It is quite a lot You money. know, for a small device. However, it is packed full of stuff. And I suppose potential. my point would be, well, what, but, but why? All those hours and hours of human endeavour gone into making something that is undeniably beautiful and, and nicely made. But mm -hmm. there are so many other ways of doing, just making music that are a lot simpler. True. Although, I mean, fantastic travel companion. So yes. small, so light. Pair of headphones. Sounds great with headphones plugged in. Yeah, really, it, really do, it does the D2H2 sound. thick sounding. Yeah, they do, definitely. I think it sounds better than the, OP, the OP1, actually. So there are quite a lot of connections and little lumps and bumps on this as well, right? Mm. So over this side then, this is the rather vulnerable volume and power uh, control. Look, so I turn it on. <laughs> nice little chime, feels quite Nintendo-y. Um, now I'm assuming that that's gonna be a bit more robust than it at first appears, but only yeah. time will tell. Um, around here is something though that's quite interesting. This is a, um, it's like a little pitch bend. And this pressure sensitive pad, but also you can use that when you actually add when you're putting steps in that you can use actually it for data input. Uh, yeah, for like velocity in velocities and stuff. I mean, it's a little bit awkward to use, but it kind of kind of good that it's there. As I mentioned, these four buttons here, which are all interconnected to to the operating of it, and then these curious kind of Lego uh, compatible um, things are here. We can see the same here. So you know you can put Lego Technic uh, technical Lego kind of sticks into there if you want to do things with it, but. Um, uh, now, there is a little Easter egg. Oh, I'll just look at this end. Um, eighth inch stereo eight, out. Yeah, and the USB-C. Now, if we turn it upside down, these little rubber things, if we tw twist them, oh yeah, there's that's the, the button that you press for um, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Right. So if you unscrew these things, you can take this back panel off. And then inside, I'm just gonna turn, turn it off. 
we can see the replaceable battery. Right. Which is cool, you know. Useful, yeah, I mean, user serviceable effectively. Yeah, very useful. And then there's this funny little thing here. If we pop it out, this little Easter egg, you've got a little, if you push that out, there's little Lego connectors on there, put that back in, it's a little phone holder. All oh, right. So you've got your screen built in. <laughs> what are these? What are these things here? Well, this is so. This is going to be the replaceable part where there'll be a new module that will be available that will so have that's the CV, CV and, and gate sort of stuff. Thinking with the with the uh, CV and gate, presumably, mm -hmm. I think that's where it's really going to score big. I mean, you can imagine hooking that up with a modular system and having all that sequencing stuff and the clocking with maybe if you could get a MIDI out as well. That could that could be the heart of your <laughs> modular sequencing rig quite easily, right? Very interesting point. Yeah, so that will be interesting to see. I mean, I think I've heard rumours that there's going to be something to do with being able to connect it to um, robots and technical Lego and things like that. <laughs> Can't go wrong with robots, can you? <laughs> right. So it is, it is actually available now. It, it has been released. I think, I yep. don't know how many, you know, whether there's loads of them, whether you might have to have a waiting list. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously a small company, we don't, we don't know, but what, 529 UK pounds? Yep. Other currencies will scroll mm -hmm. below. Um, I guess it just remains to say thank you very much, Gaz, for diving down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yes. And we're going to leave you to play uh, some sort of musical outro with okay. it. So thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you next time.